Hello everybody, welcome back to Introduction to Talmud Esser Spirot by Rav Ashlag of Yehuda Ashlag, the Baal Sulam. We are up to number 35, but we're going to do a little bit of review of what we did last time. Last time we spoke about the piece of Tikkun Zohar that Rav Ashlag brings. And in the Tikkun Zohar it explains why a person has to study Kabbalah. What, what, is, what is the reason? What's the main idea behind studying Kabbalah in all of the entire, like in the entire Torah? Why is Kabbalah itself, the study of Kabbalah and the hidden wisdom of Kabbalah, why is it so important? And so Rav Ashraq is explaining this piece of Tukin Zohar and it goes on and t- talks about uh, the times of the Messiah, Mashiach, and different spirits, spirit of wisdom, spirit of intelligence. And so we're going to do number 34, we left off at the end of 34, we'll review it, and then we'll keep going. We're up to number 34, and it starts with Upilshu. Upilshu Tikkun Ezol Soda Shvua. And so that's why the Tikkun Ezol explains the idea of the promise. The promise in the verses of Shir Shirim, where it says, Im te'iru ve'im te'oriru ta'ava If you awaken the love. And so the Tukun Ezzel explains, Right, we said last time there are two types of light, light of wisdom and light of mercy. And light of mercy is what our job, what the Jewish people, the Bnei Israel, what they have to do to reveal the light of wisdom, to reveal the goodness that already exists. And so the Oa Chesed that comes down is called Ahavat Chesed, the love of, of mercy, the love of kindness. And so the only way to draw down this light, how? How do we draw this, down this light? What is the, the process? What's the action that a person has to take? It's to study Torah and to do mitzvot. But they have conditions. When you study Torah and you do mitzvot, are you doing them for yourself? Are you thinking about everything else coming to you? Or are you thinking about from you outwards. Lo amenat kapipas. We're supposed to learn Torah and do mitzvot not to receive a reward. For the sake of learning Torah itself. Ba'atam and the reason kalidei ora chesed is that through this light of mercy that we reveal through doing Torah and doing mitzvot. Not for the sake of re- receiving reward. Nimshach l'Israel then comes down ora chuchman the light of wisdom the upper light of wisdom ha'int galeh umitabesh ba'ora chesed that is revealed and enclothes the light of mercy, Shem Shichu Yisrael, that the Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish people, draw down. We're not talking about a physical light. It is a spiritual light. Light of mercy, you can think about as, if we're talking in terms of a metaphor, light of mercy is the copper wire, and light of wisdom is the electricity that the copper wire is going through. The electricity is Oa Chuchma. It's the Chayut, it's the essence, it's the life force, it's the essence of, of life. It's the goodness, the mutav. And so this light of wisdom, it's, the, it's what it was talking about in Tikkun Ezor when it quoted the Pasuk from Yeshaya when it says, It says in the Pasuk, The spirit of wisdom. So this is the light of wisdom that we're talking about. Which is, said about the King Messiah. Like it says there, It says about the Messiah, what will happen, how all of the Jewish people will come together at, at the end of times, and during the times of the Messiah. So after Bnei Israel, the Jewish people, bring down the light of wisdom, using the light of mercy, which is to say, using the mitzvot, using the study of the Torah, not for the sake of receiving a reward, then the light of wisdom is revealed, the goodness is revealed, the times of the Messiah is revealed. All the people of Israel come together. So Rav Ashak is saying, from this we can see, from Tikkun Ezoar, that everything is revealed in the Torah and in the Torah, which is the greatest light in the world, which is the greatest light in the Everything is dependent on whether or not the Torah that you're learning and the mitzvot that you are doing 
are lishma, are for the sake of not receiving reward, for the sake of only giving pleasure to the one who created you. And so once that is fulfilled, then the Messiah can be revealed. Is the Messiah a person or is the Messiah a mindset? When you're learning Torah, when you're doing a mitzvah, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about how this can help others? Or are you thinking about how I want to do the, this, I want to do this mitzvah, I want to learn this piece of Torah, because I know it will give pleasure to the one who created me. And so this is what it's talking about. This is the secret of the promise. Of the, the promise, yes, if you awaken, what does it mean to awaken? From below, awaken from below to above, you're awakening, what are you awakening? Through your Torah and doing mitzvot, you're awakening all the chasadim, the light of mercy, which will draw down the light of wisdom. Because the redemption, the full redemption, and the gathering of all the people from the exile, it's not possible without this Technique, this process of learning for not, not for the sake of reward. Why? So why is this the case? It's because the way that the pipes of holiness, the way that the, the light, the spiritual light comes down to this world, this is how it's set up. This is the method. This is the process. Rav is pointing, us, pointing out to us, if you want to reveal the Messiah, if you want to reveal the goodness in your life, there's a process to do it. All you have to do is follow it. And that is about the mindset. So that was last time. That was Lamadad. We're going to move on to 35. And so furthermore, it says in Tukunei Zor, It says, The Spirit of, of God is uh, floating on the surface of the water. It seems physical, but there's a spiritual meaning behind this verse. What does it mean, the Spirit of God? It must mean, It means, It means, it means the time where the Shekhinah, the glory or the female aspect of God, is resting in exile. This is the spirit. It, the Shekhinah, she rests on those who are learning Torah. And why is it Shekhinah? It means Shochen. Shochen is like a, like a Shochen, like a neighbor. Shochen means to live, to dwell. The Shekhinah dwells on those who learn Torah. Perush advarim. So what is the Tikkun Ezra saying? What does it mean? Only for those who learn Torah, the Shekhinah will dwell upon. And that the Ruach Elukim is actually talking about the Shekhinah. So Rav Asher is going to explain. We're in 35. Galut, during the times of exile, which is what we are in right now. So now it's not just exile, but exile has a definition. There's an equal sign. Imagine Galut equals when Israel are learning, not for Lishma. So now you can say not when Israel are learning lo lishma is also equal to galut. So in that time, if they're in a state where they're learning lo lishma, not for the sake of uh, giving pleasure to the Creator, but if they're in the state where they're only there for the time being, temporary lo lishma, so that in order that they will get to lishma, right now they're in lo lishma, but eventually they will get to lishma. In that kind of state, then the Shekhinah will rest between them. Only in a case where you're only staying in the space of learning Torah and doing Nisvot, because you're in it for yourself a little bit, but it's not permanent. That's what you're thinking. It's not more than three to five years if we go back to the Tanakam Rabbi Yossi, the Malchokin. It's all about the mindset. Then the Shekhinah will rest between the Shekhinah Galut, but if it's in a... The Shekhinah only rests there, but it's in a sense of Galut, it's in exile. Why? Because it's still not where it's supposed to be. It's still not where it's supposed to be, which is Lishma, but it's Lo Lishma, and not Lagia Lishma. So that in order you can get to Lishma eventually, but it's not there yet, which is why it's still, as it says in the verse, in Galut, still in exile. So the Shifcha Dibtusha, like we explained last time, if you can go to last class and Watch it again. The maidservant of holiness. Right? The maidservant that prepares her mistress and prepares the one who hired her, her mistress, right? The Shechina, so that we can eventually get to Lishma. It'll make more sense if you go back to the, the last video. And this is what it says. And this is what it says when it says uh, this, the Shechina that is found between them. 
found between the people who learn to Torah. It's hidden. The Shechina is hidden. But in the end, the people who learn Torah will eventually reach the revelation of the Shechina. And then, and only then, will the spirit of the King of Messiah be floating on those who learn Torah. And will bring them and awaken them to go to Lishma, to go to the state of Lishma, as we explained so many times before. Lishma, learning Torah, lishma, learning Torah, Lishma is learning Torah because it gives pleasure to the to the one who created you. That's Lishma. So the only way you can get there, or it seems like if you're in a state where you're not there yet, but you're you want to get there, and you're learning as much as you can, and you're thinking I'm learning this so that I can eventually become Lishma, and that's your mindset, then it seems like it doesn't seem like the Ravashak is telling us this is what you need to do. And this is what will happen. Melech HaMashiach, the King Messiah, Messiah itself, the time of Mashiach is not just a time or a person. If you think Messiah is just a person on a white donkey, you got to go back to reading stories. It's a mindset. What are you thinking about when you're learning Torah? What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about when you're learning Torah, when you're learning, when you're listening to this class? Are you learning this because you want to eventually reach a state of I don't want any of this for myself. I just want to give pleasure to the one who created me. That's the sense of Lishma. Now it's okay if you're not there yet. But what are you thinking about and what are you doing in order to get there? Because the awakening of the King Messiah that brings them towards Lishma is the same as what we said before in earlier classes that the light of the Torah brings them back to the life of goodness that had already existed beforehand. The maidservant of, of holiness helps and prepares the dwelling of the Shekhinah, which is her mistress. Omnam, but, however, if when you're learning Torah, you're not learning so that you can eventually reach the Shema, you're just learning Shelo Lishma. You're just learning because you think it brings you intelligence, because it'll maybe give you Olam Haba, and you're only thinking about the reward that it gives you. Like we explained before, all these other reasons. Then the Shekhinah is very sorry and she says, Everyone is like animals. They're all eating uh, they're all eating a straw and wheat like animals. What does that mean? What does it mean that we're like animals? What does it mean that when you're not Lishma, you're like an animal? When you're learning Torah, there's no spirit of a man who rises above it's they're just enough for them who learn lolishma that they have a spirit of an animal who goes down who goes to the lower levels and the reason is all his uh, kindness and mercy is like the blossom of of the field and even those who are learning torah every mercy every kindness that they do they're doing it for themselves which means the people who learn Torah not for the right reasons and don't plan on going to the right reasons. They're only doing it for their own sake. They're not doing it for anyone else's. They're not benefiting anyone else in what they're doing. And this type of learning Torah and doing mitzvot will not bring them to the aspect of Lishma. What does it mean that they're like animals? It means that they're not planning to do good for other people. To rise above their own desires. In this time, in that time, they will remember that they are just flesh. The spirit will leave and will never come back. And this is the spirit of the Messiah. Perush, so now Ashtag has to explain this piece of Tukunazor. As opposed to the ones before who are not in Lishma, but they're planning on getting to Lishma. They're learning Al-Minat La'agiya Lishma. The Ruach the Mashiach will bring them back. The Spirit of the Messiah will bring them back towards the Mutav, towards the goodness, towards the life of good. But that's only because of their mindset that they're planning to become Lishma eventually. And they're working towards it. But those who are not planning at all, they're just continuing with no strategy, no plan. 
the spirit of the Messiah will not rest upon them. It leaves the tikkun, as all says, and will never come back. Like we said before, the impure maidservant, what does the impure maidservant do? If you're not learning Torah for the right reasons, what can the impure maidservant do? She can take your Torah, and now you don't have any Torah or mitzvot. She takes it. Why? Because you weren't learning for the right reasons. Your Torah doesn't become Torah if it's not for the right reasons. And if it's not for the right reasons, you might say, okay, so I, what, you're telling me I can't learn Torah at all if I'm not doing it for the right reasons? That's not true. Remember what we said before. You're learning Torah for, not for the right reasons, but that's only for now. Where is your mindset? That's why it says over there in Tikkunezo, they're making the Torah very dry. And they don't want to learn the wisdom of Kabbalah straight from the Tikkunezo. So what does this mean? Even though they're not successful in learning the Torah that is revealed, Gemara, Midrash, Chumash, Navi, Tanach, Mishum She'en Bama'o, because they don't have a light, they make the Torah very dry. Because of their small mindedness. Like we explained before, if a person isn't finding the Ma'or Shabbat Torah within the Torah itself, wherever he's learning Torah, whether it's Kabbalah or Pshat, why is that? It's his level of Emunah. His level of Emunah can tell about a person where he is and how he can see the Ma'or Shabbat Torah, the light within the Torah. So even though they're not successful in changing themselves and becoming Lishma, even, even if all that, where can they be successful? In learning Kabbalah. Learning Kabbalah can bring them to Lishma, even though they weren't successful in Torah Shiniglet, in the revealed Torah. The light within the Torah of Kabbalah, within the wisdom of Kabbalah, there's no chance for you to forget about the Creator when you're learning Kabbalah. As opposed to when you're learning Gemara, when you're learning about stealing and the different halachot and the, the really physical ideas, it's hard to remember that there's a Creator who gave this Torah. Because you're dealing with very physical ideas. But when you're learning Kabbalah, you're learning with words that are names of the Creator. Every word, is, every idea is dressed in clothed in, in the idea of the Creator, which is why it's so much easier to see the light within the wisdom of Kabbalah. So if you're not successful with the revealed Torah, Rabbi Chaim Vital and Tukun Ezzor say to try or at least look into the wisdom of Kabbalah. And this is the introduction to Talmud Asasfirot, which is going to explain in, in a few paragraphs. It would be easy for those people to come to the same aspect it would be easier for those people who are not successful in the revealed Torah to go to the hidden Torah the parts that were allowed like we said in previous classes and in that hidden Torah to go from just for myself and thinking about myself and the reward that I'm getting from it and to come to a state of I'm only learning and doing this mitzvot because the creator wanted me to and I know it gives pleasure to the creator and it would be easier to do it. Nakel hayu. It would be easier to do it in wisdom of Kabbalah. Shaz ha'ita ruach halukim ha'archevt alehem besodam ha'or sheba ha'mechziram lemutav. Then the Spirit of God will be able to float and the light will bring them back to goodness. Omnam. Therefore, or however, b'shum ofen enam chafetzim belimud ha'kabbalah. These people don't want to learn Kabbalah. They don't want to. Which is why Tikkun Ezra says, v'zehu shekatuv v'aylon. Woe for those who cause poverty, destruction, uh, demolition, murder, and loss in this world. Just not because they didn't want to learn Kabbalah. This is what the Tukunah Zohar says. By Ruach the Istalek and the spirit that leaves. It's the spirit of the Messiah. So now, Rabbi Ashak is going to explain what, it, what the Tikkun Ezra means when it seems like it's cursing 
those people who don't want to learn Kabbalah. It seems, or it's clear now, from the Tikkun Zohar, Rav Asher says, that there's a promise, there's a swear, the light of mercy and the light of love and in the world will not be awakened until the actions of the Jewish people of learning Torah and doing mitzvot will be for the sake of not receiving a reward. Until we reach that moment, there will not be a revelation of light and revelation of love and mercy. When we come to a mindset of giving pleasure to the one who created us, which is what it's saying in the Pasuk, I swear to you, but not Yerushalayim. It says in the Pasuk in Shir Hashirim, I swear to you, but often, this entire exile that we're going through, wartime, bloodshed, famine, everything, all these Yisurim, all these hardships that we're going through as a world, as a nation, as a people, as a family, as a community, every single hardship, it's waiting for us. It's dependent upon us. Until we're able to merit to learning Torah and doing mitzvot for the sake of giving pleasure to the Creator. And if we're able to merit this, then the light of mercy and the light of love will awaken right away. And so the sgula, the merit or the, the, the process, the tool that learning Torah, lishma, doing mitzvot, lishma, brings. All these ruchot, all these spirits of wisdom, intelligence, ruach, the Mashiach, the spirit of the Messiah. Messiah is not, it is a person, but it's also not a person. It's an idea, it's a mindset. What are we thinking about when we're doing a mitzvah? Do we think about our entire nation and where we are? Are we in exile right now? And where am I sending my love? Where am I sending my kavanot when I'm praying mincha, alvit, shachrit? What are we thinking about? What is our mindset? Then we can reach a full redemption. So not just this, but it's also explained it's not possible it's not possible for the entire nation of Israel. Zulat alide Zulat alide It's not possible. It's not possible for the nation of Israel to reach this level of revelation, this level of love, this level of light, without learning Kabbalah. Why? Rav Ashak explains, This is the path that is so easy that even those who have no knowledge about Torah are able to reach it. They're able to know about what to do and how to go about this path with Kabbalah. But this doesn't apply the same idea of knowing what to do for those who don't know about Torah and don't know about Mitzvot, why does it not apply with learning revealed Torah, only revealed Torah, Torah negle bilvad? You're not able to merit this level of light, this level of love. Zulat It's only for those who are very special, very learned, very intelligent. But through very much, a very big amount of effort. Right? We explained this before. Right? It's not able, it's not possible for those who are less intelligent or less learned or don't have such a great capability of learning revealed Torah to reach a level of lishma through that Torah. Right? Because we said before, because the clothing, the words that we use are gneva, gzela, kasher, pasul, mutar, things that are sort of physical. We, start, we, we forget the creator who gave us the Torah itself when we go so deep into these concepts. It doesn't mean that we should give up the revealed Torah. Of course, we should keep learning. But when we're trying to fix ourselves and reach a level of spirituality where we don't think about ourselves and only think about others, 
Not outwards, inwards, but inwards, outwards. From me to everyone else. The love of other people. Not just Avat Atzmi. That's only possible through learning Kabbalah. Like we said in the beginning of the Agdama, the fourth and fifth doubts, the fourth one, I don't want to misquote it. Let's look at it one more time. The fourth one was about only those who are special can learn Kabbalah. And the fifth one was about not everyone learns Kabbalah. This disproves those doubts. Everyone can learn Kabbalah. The, in, the entire point is, is that it's easy to go on this path and to transform yourself from Shalom Lishma, Lavo Lishma, through Kabbalah. And it's better than Torah Tengle Bivad. And it's better than having just revealed Torah by itself. You need both. One for learning Torah and also one for spirituality, for connecting yourself to the Creator. It's hard to remember the Creator when you're learning Adaf Agmarah. You're learning about sukkah and the vegetables that are allowed to be used. And kosher animals, not kosher animals. How are you supposed to remember who gave us this Torah? Who's the creator that I'm connecting to as I learn this Torah? Where am I sending my kavana? That becomes so much easier when you learn Kabbalah. Because everything you say, you learn, you, you, you touch, you read, you see is about the creator himself. So now the third kushia, where people would doubt Kabbalah and say, I don't want to become after derech, I don't want to lose my faith in the Creator. Rav Ashtag says a very big statement, there's no fear. You shouldn't have fear. What are you, what are you afraid of? The thing that happened before where someone was learning Kabbalah and they became totally disconnected. There were two reasons that that could have happened or that it might happen. Two reasons. Either they revealed different types of Torah that were not supposed to be revealed. If, we, if you remember, we said last time, there's Sitre Torah, the hidden secrets of the wisdom of Kabbalah that are not supposed to be revealed unless you have a master and a student. And only in certain conditions. Sitre Torah. Not supposed to be revealed. So either they revealed those types of Torah. Or. Or. Mishum shetafsu divrei kabbalah b'mashmoutam achitsuni. Or they viewed Kabbalah as something physical. They saw it and they saw what enclosed it. When they say or, they thought a light of a lamp. The light of the sun. They thought in physical terms. These people who left and totally disconnected after learning Kabbalah, it's because they were over, they, they, pro, they uh, made a mistake, they sinned on the mitzvah of do not make a pesel, a pesel, tmuna. Don't make an image of God. What does that mean? When you think of Or Hashem, the light of God. And when we talk about the light of God in or vessels, kelim, do you think about a cup? Something physical? It's not what we're supposed to do. Because that's the reason that they became disconnected. When you think about spiritual things in physical terms, you can use metaphors. But if you think that they are actually physical, you made a mistake. That's it. It's done. You can't say that the light of Hashem is coming from the sun, coming from the lamp, even though it is, but it's more than that. It's not just physical, there's a spiritual aspect to it. And you can't define it or give it offense or make it only physical. When you speak in spiritual terms, it has to be spiritual. Until this day, Rav Ashag is saying, when he's writing this introduction, when he, come, when he came out with the book, with the Sefer, that there really was a wall around this wisdom. Before now. Many people tried to learn this limud, tried to learn this wisdom, and they were not able to. Why? 
they didn't have a good enough understanding and they were stuck on the physical words, the physical terms or definitions that they would use. Ashal Ken, which is why, Rav Ashik is telling us, If you ask anyone who learns, Talmud Eser Asfirot from Rav Ashlag, you can, they can tell you about Panim Mi'irot Masbirot, which is a section in Talmud Eser Asfirot that explains the words of the Ariza, the words of the Sefer Atzchem, Lefaresh et Sefer Agadol, to explain the Sefer, Etz Achayim Ha'Ariza, Ulavshit Atzurot Agashmiut, and to undress, or make simpler, the physical terms that the Arizal uses to explain spiritual ideas. Many people get stuck on these physical terms and they get confused. They can't continue. Rav Ashtag, what he made such an effort for, and he's telling us that he, he made a very big effort to explain these terms. And to explain them in spiritual rules. Outside of the boundaries of space and time. But often, that every single person who starts to read or starts to want to learn Kabbalah is able to understand through this perush, through this explanation. Every reason, every explanation is clear through Rav Ashtag's perush. With a clear mind, in very simple terms, no less, just as a person learns Gemara perush Rashiza. It's not a coincidence, it's called Talmud Esir Sfirot. There's Talmud Bavli, Talmud Yerushalmi, Talmud Esir Sfirot. This is Talmud of Kabbalah. It's the learning of Kabbalah with simple terms explained through the perush of Rav Ashla. If we want to reach the level of Lishma, and we want to have that mindset, and get to the life of only good, and start learning Kabbalah, Rav Ashla is telling us, you can start here. I've, I've come out with a book. Talmud S. S. We have many classes on vital transformation. The YouTube channel that you're watching this now on. Many classes on Kabbalah. Start your journey. But remember, why are you learning this? You want to improve your life. You want to... I don't know. It's interesting. It's, it's famous now. No, it's, 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 a, it's a trend. If you're not learning for the right reasons or you, you're learning for the wrong reasons, but... You, you don't have an idea or you, you don't want to get to the right reasons? You don't want to learn the Shema eventually? Then what are you learning for? Just to become more intelligent? The whole point Rav Ashok is telling us is that if we really want to improve our lives like we say we want to, if we want to improve our relationships, improve our health, improve our business. We have to understand what is the mindset that we're taking on? Are we learning? Are we doing? Are we listening? Are we talking for the sake of benefiting others? Or just for our, our own benefit? And that's the entire idea that Rav Ashtag is trying to introduce to us in his introduction. So I just want to make sure we clear it up and conclude The learning of Kabbalah is not something that you should learn by itself. As he says, it's not just by itself. We said it before. You have to learn both Torah Nigle and Torah Nistar. But if your goal is to transform yourself in spirituality, and you're trying to do that with Torah Nigle, with revealed Torah, and it's not working, then you have to try. You have to try to go to more different Torah, which is called Torah Kabbalah, Chokhmat Kabbalah, the wisdom of Kabbalah. The Ta'amei Torah, the reasons or tastes of the Torah. And it's all been explained. And we have a beautiful channel full of many, many classes. All you have to do is take the first step. Thank you. Have a good day.